Hi. We are going to be looking at our full visualization again. So I'll pick up from the code uh, I uh, gave you in the previous video. If you remember, what we did was we needed to visualize a three-dimensional velocity field. So we defined uh, functions of the velocity components. So uh, in three dimensions, a velocity uh, vector will have three components, c, v, w, and these were the functions, right? And what we did then was, um, okay. So I later on I had uh, just let me get rid of this. I had defined an unsteady velocity field later on, so that is not what we are interested in now. Anyway, coming back, um, so we defined the three components of the velocity vector as u, v, w, and then we defined the space where we wanted to plot the velocity vectors. And then what we did was we calculated the, uh, we calculated the three components. Finally, we uh, used the quiver three function to draw the velocity vectors. Let me check if it is recording. Yep, and let me turn this. Uh, let me uh, run this again. Let me turn the annoying sound off again. Yeah. So this is what we got in the previous video, right? You got a velocity field in three dimensions. What I wanted to show you in the previous video was uh, streamlines. Uh, so if you, again, if you get back to your uh, fluid mechanics textbooks, you would know what a stream, you would understand what a streamline is. But anyway, in short, what it is, is uh, for example, what uh, you can think of it as in a steady flow field, if you, for example, drop a particle somewhere in the flow field, the part that the particle takes, that is a streamline. But only this uh, definition is valid only when you're talking about a steady flow field, which we have right now. If the flow field is unsteady, then th that is called, I think, a path line. But as long as you have a steady flow field, and then, then the path taken by a particle, that is called a, a streamline. So let's see how we can uh, draw that. And that would be a better way to visualize, right? Uh, these vectors, they although they are better than looking at equations, looking at path taken by particle in a steady flow field would be a better visualization, right? Um, but how do we do it? So in MATLAB, uh, you have a function called streamline, which draws streamlines for you, but Octave doesn't have it. But it's not uh, that difficult to implement as long as we understand how streamlines work. So as I told you, what we need to do is follow the path of the particle. So for example, if the path's initial uh, position is given by, if the particle's in initial position is given by x, y, z, um, then let's just talk about the x direction first. So if you want to know the new position of the particle in the x direction, so it'll be x old, the old position, plus the change in the position with respect to time, times delta t, right? Uh, this seems simple enough. I mean, I don't think further explanation is required. You have your old position, you have the change with respect to time. If uh, you multiply it with that change in time, you get the new position, x plus dx. But you have these values, right? This is u. So you have that with you. You have u with you. Right, so this is your equation for the new position of x. Similarly, this will be your equation for the new position y new position along y, but instead of u, you'll have the y velocity component v, and similarly, the z coordinate, the new, uh, the coordinate of the new position, the z coordinate of the new position will be given as such. But here you have this. So as long as you have these three equations, you can, uh, okay, um, you can uh, solve them for some time 0 to t with intervals of delta t and then you can generate these new positions and you can plot them so that will give you a streamline right? it's not that difficult to implement so let's get back what we need to do now is um, uh, yeah, let's what let's do one thing let's pick up a point in the domain let's pick x y z uh, but Okay, the labels aren't visible. I don't know which axis is x, which is y, which is z. So let me just label them quickly. Okay. Let me just label them x. Let me label x as x itself. Y label as y. And z label as z. Right. So this is x, this is y. So let me pick a point 
where I want to draw my streamline uh, where, on, where I want to start drawing my streamline let me pick that point so let's pick one let's pick some one at the bottom so x 0 y um, yeah, 0 and uh, let's take z to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 so somewhere here right so let me um, yeah let x s be the starting point of the streamline 0 y s 0 and z s minus 0 0.5 right now, now let's start drawing so let me define it uh, let me define dt values so um, let me just call them steps right how many steps i'm going to take in time so let me call it let me define that to be 100 okay so i go let me also define dt delta t in this equation right i also need delta t so let that be 0 0.1 okay so for t that goes from uh, 1 to n steps I'm sorry, I'm making a lot of mistakes while typing. So, yeah, what do we need to do now? So, we need to write these equations. Okay, so let's write that. So, I'm not going to be using new uh, different variables for new and old. I'm just going to replace my old variables with new values. So, what is this? It's uh, u, but I already have u there, right? So, I need the value of u. Um, right okay so there might uh, so we need to think here we need the values of u v and w and uh, but we already ha we have them defined only at discrete locations so try to think it through um, when i'm writing this equation i would require u v and w values at any i would need them at any location in the domain right in the domain which i have which goes from minus one to one in all the three directions I may require the, these velocity values at any point in between the domain, any at any point uh, within the domain. But I have these values available with me only for some discrete values, only for six uh, points along x, six points along y, or six point, points along z. So I'll have like six into six as thirty-six, uh, and I don't know what's uh, what is thirty-six times six. I'm very bad at math, especially when I'm you know recording so it's 216 okay so you we have values only at 216 points but i may uh, require values at any uh, locations which may be not available within those uh, 216 points so what you can do is you can use another matlab or octave uh, function which is called interp n so it interpolates values right what we need is interpolation right if we have a lot of values in x y and z directions and if i need some values in between then i can interpolate them so I can use the function called interpolate, interp n. The values I pass them is um, the x, y, z values, right? This one, these values, this x, y, z values. I mean, these are the ranges. But see, I'm replacing. I, if you if you had paid attention in the earlier code, what I did was I replaced these values with the new ones. So this time I'm not I'm not going to replace them. I'll just uh, make them capital because I need them, I'm going to use them. Earlier I had no use for them, so I was replacing them. Right. So now I pass in the x, y, and z. That is where, these are the locations where I want to interpolate. And what do I want to interpolate? I want to interpolate the value of u. Right, because u is defined at all these x, y, z values. And uh, what else do we need? So now I need to pass in the point at which I want my velocities right so this is the point I want my velocities so I hope you understand so what I'm doing is I'm passing the uh, locations which I had the velocity which I had to this function called interpolation and then I'm asking it to return back the velocity at these three points okay so once I have that I just multiply it by um, dt let me again uh, copy this and uh, paste okay copy paste paste so this one will be uh, ys this is zs cs ys 
and this is I'm interpolating uh, V and here I'm interpolating W right then what do I do I plot these points as I generate them so because I'm plotting in three-dimensional space I use the command plot 3 what do I plot X S Y S Z S let's plot it with a red marker and yeah I had to also do hold on right otherwise the old graph would go away fine uh, there's another thing what may happen is that my new uh, values which get generated the new locations they sometimes might, might go out of the domain when that happens so I'll show you okay let me show you what I mean let me just comment this out uh, okay let me comment these portions out because um, I'll be needing them for later yeah let me just run flow stream right let me use the function called interp n x y z u and let me uh, uh, let me uh, take a point which is outside the domain it's 10 10 10 that doesn't lie in the domain right because if you look back at the code the domain is minus 1 to 1 in all the three directions so the value it returns is any or it's not a number so you can use uh, so if this is uh, what you get as return value you will not be able to you will not be able to plot it and uh, your program may get stuck because you are given a number which cannot be plotted so the computer you know may may try some things and it may get stuck so what you can do is you can check you can use this is nan is it not a number see na is not a number right so you can pass in fact if i store it in let's say a then i check i can check is nan a right so it is it not a number it says yes it's not a number okay so um, if we have if uh, what we do what we want is we don't want to plot if it is if we get not a number if we don't have a number uh, matlab or octave will not be able to plot it and it might get stuck so we check whether each of these is not a number right x is is nan y is is nan c is if it is so if any this double vertical line means or so if any of these returns one right then i break the loop i end i don't want to plot if it doesn't then i plot right so let's now run this command uh, flow i think it's flow stream right flow stream okay do i don't i have it okay i haven't actually okay let me go to uh, i haven't changed the folder show your computations i think this is where we have flow stream yeah so as you can see here this is the path that the particle would take right if released at this point and this is the initial point where we ch what we chose and this is how it eventually uh, this is the path that it eventually took so this looks like a better way to visualize right you can even look by looking at the arrows you can say yeah this is how it's actually going to be right the arrows nearby they point the particle to follow that direction so you can again choose um, a different initial position if you want you can let this be for example this also let be minus 0 0.5 and you can let this be one and see how that changes uh, this it seems that I have chosen a point which got spent uh, sent outside the domain so let me decrease this one to minus 0 0.5 yeah. so this as you can see right this started somewhere here and it took this path so this uh, seems like quite an interesting uh, thing to try try out yourself right and it's uh, one of the good uh, it's a good way to visualize flow it's much better than looking at equations so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one